Take out, take out, take out, take out a sheet of paper. The events in this memory happened in the period immediately preceding the entry of mankind into the last millennium. We have not disappeared yet, but we have a geological age named after us. Anthropocene. Google it. I attended the courses of the Economic High School Number 1 in Bucharest, that's the capital city of Romania, in a class of over 30 students, of which 24 girls. I became interested in hip-hop music, to the detriment of rock and the loathed gypsy folk musical breed called Manal. These were the only options available to me in the modulator-demodulator era of proto-internet. In the ninth grade I was a virgin, I was one meter and a half high in the little over 50 kilograms which I had learned to use very efficiently on the playing field since the general school. Despite or thanks to these attributes, I was a high class dribbler in football and basketball alike which often put me in the position to score for my team. If I did not manage to shoot at the gate or at the basket, then surely I would attract two to three zealots from the other team and consider that it is my duty to squeeze out the balloon to an unmarked teammate, who could possibly exploit the space left by the opponents who were trying to intercept me. A bruise, possibly combined with a sprain and a pair of contusions, did not represent a stopper for this attacker, offensive or defensive midfielder, defender, goalkeeper, game leader or shooting guard. I like to non-verbally taunt my opponents through swift executions, elegant dribblings and brief dispossessions. I was mainly helped by my expansion and speed, not so much by my endurance though. And that is why I was trying to conserve my energy, frequently clashing with teammates who did not know me so well due to the apparent lack of dedication on my side. I myself was also mad when I lost, but that happened very rarely. Maybe only when I was sick or injured, or when I had a very shitty team. As for playing, I played anyway and anytime. And I never shouted. Neither for joy, nor from anger. Not at my opponents, and certainly not at my teammates. I preferred to let the style of play and especially the score to make the statements, because I knew that they were more effective on the opponent's psychic than any spoken word I could utter. Now regarding my studying activities, I would keep going if I were someone interested in a good read. Economy, logic and philosophy. These were the three disciplines that Mr. Darman teaches at the Economic High School number one in the capital city or Romania. In an in-depth scan of both cerebral hemispheres, looking for the relevant information that was fixed in memory during the high school period for the above-mentioned fields. I cannot say that I have kept a great deal. So as not to turn back a blank sheet of paper though, I will say that I vaguely remember something in the formula for calculating the productivity of the company's employees from the economy class. Then I still remember something from logic about the premise and conclusion. If the premise is zero, false. Then the conclusion cannot be true. 1. This but also the excluded third criterion defines that situation in which there are only two possible states for a certain thing at a certain moment in time. For instance either online or offline, or pregnant or not pregnant. It does not allow shades, there cannot be a third variant, hence the excluded third. As for Mr. Darman's third discipline, philosophy, to my shame, I remember absolutely nothing. Returning to our train of thought, this teacher presented us every week 40 minutes of new information in three different hours of class on three different subjects. At the first hour of class ever in philosophy, he chalked his last name big on the board, then below, small up the name of the three disciplines he was to teach us. You'll give a test every class hour, he calmly addressed the class which had begun to tremor. What can that mean? How do you mean test? Like, do you evaluate each of us orally? Do you give us a written control test? Just on the philosophy class or the others too? Dramatic questions began to flow. At the beginning of each hour of logic, economy and philosophy, you'll give a written test of five minutes. That's not a big thing. 
he said, smiling, and I think that was the only occasion when I saw him smile, really. But it is not possible, Mr. Teacher, the students begged. Alas, written tests on economy, philosophy, and logic. Woe to us. You can relax. The test scores will count to a small extent to the final average, the teacher cordially replied. It's just a short test, good people. It's not the end of the world. It will be cool. You'll see if you'll like it. Must we give a test today? Asked a more stiff-tongued student. No, today I will teach you the first class in philosophy. Say philosophy. Philosophy. With an S, not with the Z. Yes, with an Yes, I have no thought the. Ha, 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 ha. The first hour of the class started somewhat normal in the sense that he began to talk uninterruptedly at a full rate, which is why some students started to raise their hands before the first ten minutes asking to speak because they had become frustrated by the activity of writing after an impossible dictation. Noticing a small forest of raised hands, he stopped and explained, a little disturbed, that it is not necessarily to take notes except for the occasions when he expressly nominates the exception himself. He had a very strange style, but we've complied. After half an hour we concluded, surprised and somewhat relaxed, that it was not so bad. Occasionally he stopped, about three times per class hour, announcing us to write down a definition or something of the kind. And although the dictation continued at the same speed, he repeated the respective phrase in an increasingly grumpy tone, looking sharp with each repetition to those who most often asked for repetitions. Starting with the second hour of each of the disciplines class, however, he began to do what he had announced at our first meeting, and what would become a habit. Take out a sheet of paper. This bearded man in his early forties is walking calmly and permanently deep thinking between the benches filled with puzzled students. Then he stops near one front bench student and he browses with a rather rigid and knotted finger opening the student's notebook in the middle to indicate the double sheet of paper in the center. Then his voice is heard addressing the whole class in his usual calmly and commanding tone. So you break the sheet in the middle of your notebook, which you break again in two, and give it to your bench colleague, and there the boy in the next row of desks, give it to her. On this side, right. So, each of you has a single sheet of notebook paper. So, good, ready. Please write. Come on, fast, it doesn't take long at all. The test is very short. So write your name and the date at the top of the page. Today's date is September 16th. Then the questions. 1. What is 2 if 3 name 3 for what do we mean by? Have you all written the questions? Well, you have five minutes. Write down what you know. What you remember from what I taught you last time. If you don't remember anything, don't write anything. Do not be afraid, you have five minutes. Come on, please. After reading each question from the test several times, my colleagues and I wanted to ask him for some clarifications, but he dived in the school chair, completely ignoring all the happenings in the class for several minutes. Observing this, most of the students quickly wrote whatever they could produce remotely connected to the questions being asked. Others scribble tongue-in-cheek answers, and those who lacked the courage to write on or off the subject returned a blank sheet. After approximately 300 seconds, he springs from behind the school chair and he starts squeezing away the papers from under the student's eyes, delaying those whose papers he could not pull because they were vehemently opposing as they were only trying to buy time to materialize some last-minute additions. After completing the operation of collecting the written tests by hoof and horn, he announced victoriously, Evrica, I've got them all. Now I'll correct them and give them back immediately. 
and then I'll let you home, he said from the top of the school chair, quickly and gently extracting a first manuscript. Generally, the man corrected him at the end of the school class on fast-forward mode. I was seated in the second desk on the center row and I had learned the patterns of the facial expressions he showed while correcting our papers. I could correlate it with the movement of the pen watching from a distance of two meters from the school chair trying some educated guesses on the resulting grades, which were given to my poor colleagues and a couple of times even to my own examinations results. Ha ha ha. He used to put both his hands on the sheet of paper with the student's test and look at the name. Then, at the first line and grin in disgust. He read carefully and inevitably took the pen, always the black pen. He was a left-hand writer and he used to cut with a single line something then went to the next question. He grinned again, then came another cut in black. Then he arrives at the third one always the cut, and the fourth, and so on, and finally he writes the grade four. Four. On the student's test paper. I was going to realize from a distance that someone can write the number four, using three straight and precise movements, which is obviously written differently from the number three. That one only needs two rounded, long movements. Thus I could discern when he was nervous, when he was bored, and when he was interested in what he read, from what we had written, and sometimes even the magic numbers. But I should not have been fooled by the correlation of Professor Darman's grimaces with the grades obtained by the students, no. I remember one special occasion when he came to a paper in front of which he lingered with content. He seemed happy with what he read and his forehead was slowly turning smooth and he didn't cut anything with the black pen anymore. He was apparently doing just black, seeing signs, like a Nike logo, signaling that he found the answer okay. He seemed pleased with the answer of the first question, and with the second one. And with the third one, unbelievable. However, without any overall significance, since he also granted grade 4 to the poor student, she confirmed it after having receiving it. There seemed no logic in it, and getting to have my scrutinizations was a labor of love, reconing that I am easing the waiting pain of my colleagues, whose work was examined in front of me. Most of them were top brass agonizing girl students who hiccup size because of the potential ruin of their annual averages. Comparing the forecasts which I communicated in real time to my colleagues in the back with the results of the tests, we concluded that this non-conformistic teacher basically gives four types of grades. Grade 3, 4, 5 and 6. The last one, only twice in four years, while he praised the exceptional student, never myself. The first one, grade three, I believe he used to award to those who gave ironic or insultingly tongue-in-cheek answers. Most of us received grades of four or five. The passing grade was granted to about one-fifth of the class. There were also a lot of grades of one and two, though. Years have passed and we got used to his tests, most commonly known as control papers. That helped us a lot in dealing with the psychological pressure of tests on any studying discipline in general. The theses were more important written tests at select disciplines, imposed on the students only once per semester, usually before the school holidays. At the time, the Ministry of Education had the school year divided into three segments. Semester 1, 2 and 3. Sir, I was sustaining three theses level test papers per year on the most important subjects, including economy, as my high school had a reputable economic profile. It was quite a high stress, as it should have revealed the level of knowledge accumulated by the student over a period of four months, and the weight of this special grade in the total annual average was quite high. Interestingly enough, the three disciplines of economy, logic and philosophy on which paths of basic knowledge we've been guided along by our teacher, never really hurt anyone at the annual most important school grade average. There was always a six from the belly before the end of the year. 
sometimes a grade 7 or 8, and rarely a necessary grade of 9 to save some dizzy berserk or to shield an amorous puberty girl or student from holiday nightmares. I do not remember if there were any yearly average conditionings, but there surely were no school year repetition penalties for anybody. It turns out that neither the cheekiest students nor the great class skipping bowlers were avenged, and this detail earned him each year the respect of the whole class. I believe he is still teaching at the high school I graduated from, as a teenager. My feeling is that he is a good guy who tried to teach us a lot of useful things, despite the turbulent historical period we were living in as a society. We were sitting in his 40-minute classes, sometimes as short as just 25. His classes were usually the last of the school program and they ended around 7 p.m. Sometimes he was going to let us leave early and he would start the school class without dropping the test, but instead heeding us to write in our notebooks some very important notion. And at that moment we knew it would be a short school class. We were super careful and cooperative, we had the notebook sheets on our desks at the right time. He would give us the test at the end of the class, take the papers after a few minutes and let us know that we can go home. He would say he would get them graded at his home and that he would bring them to us on the next school class. We couldn't care less. We were desensitized and thoroughly prepared for any and all tests that would follow. P.S. The photo with the student card is from the general school, not from high school. The teachers did not have the guts to grant me any grade eights. Even in French I received a grade of twelve. I am Professor Meanington and I thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day. day, day.